last week's parsha ended with a bit of a cliffhanger where Yosef caught Binyamin with a stolen goblet and decreed that Binyamin will stay imprisoned in Egypt and the rest of the brothers will go back home to their father and once again have to tell their father that his favorite child has been taken and is gone and is no longer with them. The brothers can't confront this possibility. And in the beginning of this week's parsha, Yehuda steps forward and beseeches Yosef and presents an elaborate speech to try to convince Yosef to have mercy on them, which is successful as it motivates Yosef to reveal himself and to um, relieve them of this devastating possibility. The heroic and effective speech of Yehuda is only troubling once you read it and try to find what it is about the actual words that Yehuda said that made an impact on Yosef. Because when you read the words that Yehuda spoke, we see that Yehuda simply rehashed all the events that Yosef already knew about that they discussed. Yehuda does refer to Mechiras Yosef, but does not quite take responsibility or confess to their role in that horrific event. Yehuda simply rehashes the situation that that Yaakov, their father, is home alone, that he's distraught over the loss of his son Yosef, that he's terribly in love with the youngest child, Binyamin, that they were forced to come for food, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd like to suggest one thing, and that is that the hatred and the resentment that the brothers felt towards Yosef that precipitated their uh, sale or their attempted murder of Yosef was really understood. We understand why the brothers resented Yosef. Yosef was the favorite child. Yosef was cloaked in the Ketonas Pasim that their father made specifically and only for Yosef. Yosef had the dreams of his rulership over them, and Yosef revealed those dreams to the, to, to the brothers. It's completely understandable why the brothers resented Yosef. What should they have done better? What they could have done is to not only think about how Yosef made them feel, but to also put themselves in the shoes of Yosef and understand Yosef's situation. What they could have also done is put themselves in the shoes of their father to understand his perspective. And if they would have joined their own perspective with those of the people around them, they might have had a less extreme reaction to the situation. They should have thought Yosef, it wasn't, he didn't choose to be the favorite child. He didn't choose to be Yaakov's favorite and to receive the Ketonas Pasim. Did he really have an option to say no thank you when Yaakov presented him with the Ketonas Pasim? Did he have the option to give it back or not wear it? What was Yosef supposed to do? And they could have even thought about the perspective of Yaakov, who was deceived by Lavan into the difficult marital situation he was in, and to think, It must be difficult for him. Maybe it's not his fault that he has this affinity towards Yosef. Maybe they could be resentful, but maybe they could also be understanding of the situation of others that is not as easy as it might appear. And when Yehuda came forward and spoke to Yosef, he did exactly that. He said, you have to understand how our father feels. He's brokenhearted. He won't be able to bear the loss of Binyamin. I'm not judging him one way or the other, but it's a reality. He won't be able to bear it. We don't resent Binyamin. It's not Binyamin's fault that his father loves him. It's just the reality. We're not going to fault Binyamin, but we're actually going to see it from his perspective and therefore try to do what's right for everyone. And when Yosef saw this change in perspective, that the brothers had this newly acquired empathy to see their experience from their own perspective, but to also see where others are coming from, then Yosef understood that they had turned around and that they're no longer the single focused 
resentful brothers that sold him, but were compassionate and kind and loving to siblings, and he, that he can ultimately rebuild his relationship with, which is exactly what happens. And it is for this reason that Yehuda's talk was so impactful and meaningful, because it captured this newly acquired empathy and love and connection to others beyond themselves.